Hello, Rama TV reality riffing. Uh, welcome to the armchair series. And I am joined by, I really, you know, my favorite reality riffing guest ever, the only guest I've ever had on multiple times. Um, my friend, colleague, and brother from another mother, Remington Donovan. Welcome. Let me, um, okay, sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to be here. And I, um, I kind of joke in my head because I do the numerology and the numbers change every year. It's always a good excuse to get on that, like, to get on with you. And then we could like talk about the year because next year is a whole other number. It's true. Uh, so it's, it's a true. good advantage. It is a good advantage. And also people have said over the years that they go back to these conversations and they're really prophetic. So, um, oh. I, I get messages like from talks we've had from years ago. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, I just discovered you or people that knew me from many years ago and then discovered you and started getting into spirituality. Then they're messaging me and they're like, what? Oh my God. Like, I can't believe you were on an episode with Guru, you know, Guru Jugget. So <laughs> I'm like, they, now all of a sudden they think I'm like famous or something. Like, <laughs> oh, stop being so, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Because of um, you. Um, but you know, we also, we want everyone to know that we really, you know, are, we only choose days where our hair really are going to like complement each other, um, which is every day. Um, <laughs> We have big hair. <laughs> we have big hair. It's big hair energy here. Um, <laughs> but I am really happy because we've been wanting to do this. And today's been, I, I don't know. I, for me personally, feel like today was much more um, powerful than the lunar eclipse. And I was a little surprised, actually. It's been so intensely powerful. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel great. I actually, I, I agree with you. There's been this powerhouse, but for me, there's been a, a peace for, for me. And it's been sort of a basic, like, you know, work day uh, on, on my end and with Gina, but um, it, there's something I definitely, there's a huge shift that feels like beyond the eclipse. And I think that yeah. my thought is as well, because we're in the Sagittarius, energy which I'm a big fan of like I have um Jupiter and Sag and I have a lot of ninth house in my natal chart so uh it's a it's an energy that I resonate with and I and I think it's prepping us for a lot of the energy that's shifting on the solstice especially because it's going to involve Jupiter and Saturn and I actually feel like it's softening some things in a way and it's elevating but we need this jolt to prepare us for the energy of the five year which is definitely some things i want to touch on for sure because that is that's a whole different vibe it's a whole different ball game than the current year 2020 of the four energy um so i think it's like a lot, I, I just want to add too. sometimes these energies as much as like I have a practice and I do this and I teach sometimes the stuff it's just happening yeah. like I can feel it I had to I went grocery shopping today and I'm working and I was just getting ready to do this and I did laundry so it wasn't like oh I'm ha I'm making to the 50th ether of the cosmos I'm like these shifts just start taking place and there's a teaching in magic that a lot of when we don't even know it and yeah. and we and it's important to not judge anybody else's spirituality and it's important to not judge your own spirituality sometimes when we think we're doing the horribly and we're not growing we're growing the most and sometimes when we're like on leaps and bounds and things are working out which is great but it, it's good there's a certain flow as well as putting in all the work and, and doing your practice, which I'm really going to emphasize because five is a, is a badass powerhouse energy. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think we're, we're householders and there's practical magic and also like there's, it, it does feel um, on this auspicious day that there's been some sort of kind of like in to, uh, integration. Um, 
that is happening. I feel like we're kind of like getting like kind of humpty dumpty back together again, but it's not, it's not, it's impossible, but there's like, there's some sort of kind of um, consolidation happening, getting ready for this. So that's why we wanted to have the conversation. And meanwhile, poor Gina's in your, in your numerology sweatshop over there um, doing (laughs) Well, I can just had, see her over there. She, she puts me on tasks, <laughs> but she like she's like, here's the simple stuff. She keeps track of all the meticulous, like things that take a lot of accuracy. <laughs> well, the, so, the, those those readings, those uh, New Year numerology readings, are so incredible, and um, they're really magical. And just everyone who's listening to this, um, you got to get one and get one for your friends and family because it's such a it's such a unique and also powerful gift to give people. We put uh, thank you. Um, and you and I are both having a seven, so it's it's kind of cool that we're on the same yeah cycle the way it works out generally sometimes once we start getting to double digits it'll it'll go we could go in our different directions but um uh we put a lot of energy a lot of thought they're very conscious um everything even their presentation the the write-up as well as they're constantly being mantra blasted they're always living around crystals and the tree of life and it really ties in so much Kabbalah so much mysticism and so much tantric numerology because I'm really I know I'm the person on the planet that holds the space to see how those merged you know so it's like not this hodgepodge there's one numerology that comes from nature and um so maybe there's this system and then I'm groomed in 30 plus years of uh, mystery tradition of Kabbalah with a Q, but these, these are so integral and the Tantric and the Kabbalah are both mystery schools. And it's amazing that in this incarnation, probably many others, but I was able to really be exposed to both of these and see how it's one school. And even Hari Jeevan's like, they're both mystery schools. They're coming from the exact source. And even in magic, the teaching is like one culture is taking this concept. It just matriculates through a different language and a, and a different cultural experience. Um, and this is why I personally really like my numerology stuff is because it really integrates all of that wisdom. And yeah. um I think that was maybe my doorbell. It's probably like an Amazon package. Um, no, it was my doorbell, but I don't know what's going on. That's what's fun about the 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 living room series is you get to watch me like chase my dogs around and like Joanna's here. Like, you know, I don't know if something's going on. Because I, I, really, I always get the strongest, most severe knocks. Like it's like law enforcement or something. And it's like, oh, here's that like soap I ordered because but we have tra- you know we have trauma we have trauma so um, um. <laughs> but the back the reports all i'm saying is there's a lot of wisdom and i feel like with my i was as i was saying this i was thinking you know how sagittarius energy always has like this reputation for laughing at their own jokes or sag aspects and i feel like no i've was, never i've never heard of I that mean, before <laughs> um as you laugh at your nose. <laughs> exactly. Which, I think you have a sad moon or something. I well, do. I'm always like enamored by like the wisdom. Like I'll read something that I wrote or something and I'm like, oh, that's really good. And then I'm like, oh, that I wrote that. <laughs> and so, um, but I know with my numerology, it's what I do. I do it every single day. And I've been doing it every day for so many years. Um, it's just in me and I really live and breathe it. And I'm just sharing my experience and my insight with it. And um, if you order now, we'll get it out tomorrow. So you can probably get it for Christmas. Um, that's pretty amazing. I have mine right here. My, my seal fell off, but this is my beautiful. Um, oh yeah. You can just glue it or stick it back on, but okay. you might like open it. Yeah. Yeah, I know it. It, it fell off when three. when I opened it, not like uh, bu- not uh, before. It fell off when I opened it. Um, but they have these beautiful seals, and they're just so amazing. 
Well, yeah, and with the numerology, you have all your numbers, but then every year you have a new number that's also your number for the year. And just in general, what, why I love the system and why it's the system that I utilize and that I teach is that I like just having one go-to frequency, right? So I can look at my astrology is going to be shifting a little every day. I, I look at all of that as well, but it's nice to say, okay, I'm having a seven year. How do I make things nicer? How do I upgrade? How do I level up the energy this year? And then I take that concept and I mix it with the overall archetype energy that the whole planet's experienced, for example, which is going to be a five year. And so it's, it's a great reminder and it just keeps me on point where I can get totally sidetracked, like, oh, my moon's doing this, this is happening, Mars, all relevant and all things that I like to pay attention to. But sometimes I just like to keep it really simple. Like, even with like Hari Jeevan, he gave me a meditation years ago and he just was like, just do this one. And I was like, great. Yep. <laughs> like I, for me, I either he just, that resonates, it works. And he's like, anything else? have fun with it maybe it's extra credit but he's like this is all you need yeah no we're we're into keep keep it simple we're into keep it simple uh so the numerology is so pointed but should we like there's so many energy so many shifts we're speaking on an eclipse but we have the solstice and we have this five years so i don't know where should we jump in Well, let's jump in. Um, Let's, yeah, let's talk a little bit about kind of the energies that led us here and a little whatever you want to touch on with the eclipse. And then we'll talk about the the trigon and next year. Do you want to, we'll do it. We'll do it somewhat. How about I get into some of the hidden prophecies about mind control and control and. um, Yeah. (laughs) Why not? Start off light and easy. Yeah. Let's start off light. And (laughs) so. From many, many years ago, as since I was a teenager, when I was formally um, practicing and formally brought into a certain path, uh, as many of your listeners know, and as you know, I, I grew up uh, with Swami Sachidananda. Um, so I grew up on an ashram. I grew up doing yoga. I grew up having to teach yoga, even as a, literally as a seven, eight, nine-year-old. Uh-huh. Um every kid had to learn to be a teacher. And this was before there were any certificates, teachers trained. So all I'm saying is I've been, been in this uh, for, for a while. Uh, I was kind of born into all of this, but in the magical tradition, there's just a lot of more hidden teachings. And there's a lot of prophecies of the shift in consciousness, whether some traditions um, and I, a lot of your teachings emphasize the Aquarian age. Um, we also call it the age of, of Horus coming out of the Piscean age, which we call the age of Osiris, which is sort of this sacrificed God energy. So we're coming out of a, a, a time of the spiritual modality was one of sacrifice, right? You sort of you sort of give everything up, Piscean energy, just surrender everything to the divine. The monastic orders were thriving. Um, and that, that held a certain mystery. And there was something that humanity was meant to, to learn from that. But we teach, and I, I have talked about this at Rama a lot, but whether you, whatever age, whether you want to call it the new age, fifth something paradigm, blah, blah, blah. Um, Aquarian age, Eon of Horus, we know there's a shift in consciousness. And so I was given a lot of prophecies, though, that I'm seeing unfold that I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is actually happening. And some of it is this energy and this teaching that these, these dark energies that have had their grip on humanity, that have had their grip on this planet, for a very, very long time, um, aren't wanting to give that up. And so now there's an energy of Aquarian energy is the water bearer, it's the cleanser, it's the truth. It's just like, oh, we're gonna bust this shit wide open. And in magic though, some of the teachings of how those dark forces are still going to maintain their control and raise their ugly head it all started years ago, and one of the prophecies, there's a, um, 
alchemical prophecy that says most of us kind of consider, okay, the, the human race, which is part of the animal kingdom in alchemy you have animal kingdom, you have plant kingdom, you have mineral kingdom, uh, kind of rules, has rulership and um, like uh, caretaking over the planet. And, and like in the Bible, say man has dominion over the planet and that gets misconstrued. That's really supposed to mean we're the ones responsible to take care of it, not just mm -hmm. like the environment, okay? Like this is a much broader concept. That's a part of it. Um, but these, so we have some control, but what I found interesting is this prophecy was given to me that there's now chemical prophecies that says the mineral kingdom will rule. And when that came out, nobody, people thought, oh, it's gonna be rocks. But then you think Silicon Valley, then you think wow. computers, you think minerals and computers, right? Crystals, right. things like that. So I'm sure there's some new age or crystal sales people out there that are like, oh yeah, like crystals. And I have and they are. Lot. I mean, I mean, I have the, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because <laughs> in some way, like the crystal grid is coming is coming alive. So you could look at it that way too. That's a very high. So there's always like this high aspect with this yeah. prophecy, and then there's yeah. the Silicon Valley aspect. And yeah. So then now the level of censorship that we're seeing, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago on that panel, yeah. but the censorship is so insanely real and it's all essentially coming from Silicon Valley. But yeah. now we have a society that we're all communicating through Zoom or through the computer and we're just getting more and more separated. So the prophecy started with there. The other teaching was it, they're going to take over in a way that's very positive seeming. And it's always in order to serve you better, right? And it started with, in order to serve you better, we're going to record this phone call. So, oh, great, I'm gonna have better customer service that right. every phone call I make to a corporation is being recorded, which produces like over time, you're like, okay, I'm just monitored, I'm watched and everything I do is recorded and I'm totally fine, it's normal. And that energy just started opening up and now I've just seen the floodgates of in order to protect you. And I just can't believe how many people even with COVID want to be tracked, want to get vaccinated, wanted to assert their will, want to, want to assert their freedoms because it's now it's not only to serve you better, it's to protect you better. And people have just been so conditioned. Like I can't believe the messages I'll get when people are like, well, they're already tracking you on your phone. I'm like, yeah, that's still on some level, some choice. And if I go out, but like, I could not bring my phone, but it just doesn't like, it drives me crazy that people just are willingly saying, oh, it is what it is and that's fine. And the other prophecy that I found interesting I talked about while we were in Egypt is that the dark forces and in the magical tradition are the forces of set, the energy of set. And I've said this a lot since quarantine, but I'm gonna say it one last time because I know you, Rama has a lot of new people since everything jumped online. Yeah. Um, in fact, I hopped on a, one of those calls a few months ago and I'm like, how did everyone, not, how did all these people not know who I was? <laughs> Just because like pre-quarantine, I was like yeah. physically at Rama a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I say that sort of jokingly, but what I wanna say is that in the last battles, where the dark was giving control of the planet. And those were the forces of set, which is just darkness for darkness, destruction for destruction, chaos for chaos, um, was always in this battle with Horus, who is the light, the Avenger of the light, who is the Falcon. Um, we went to all of those temples in yeah. Egypt. You and I were there at the same time. Yeah. And we could talk about like the temple of Edfu, like you could feel and everyone had these insane experiences. But what I want to touch on one probably last time publicly is that the teaching is, is that when the forces of light, the armies of light were winning, the dark forces, the only way and the only defense they had at that time was to retreat into their caves and they were down on their weapons. So what they did is they wore ghoulish masks to scare people. And so there's a much deeper teaching about when you're confronting your ego and your illusions and the masks of the illusion of your life, right? So we can really abstract and we can go way deeper into our spiritual growth, but my mind is blown to see people 
the, almost the entire planet, and we live in Los Angeles, which is very strict, be forced to stay inside and be forced to wear fucking masks. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, this is this prophecy come to life in a way that I would have never imagined. Yeah. And I kept, th- I kept thinking, oh, well, okay, it's part of our spiritual evolution. What are the lies of my own existence and which just aren't true? And I'm trying to evolve out of that illusion and, and make this incarnation where I get more access and, and more empowered to the truth of my soul. And that's cool and great. And that's what we're all doing. But now you've set up these dark forces have set up this huge mass world ritual of making people retreat into their caves, which is a symbol of that dark energy and to wear a mask, which is the symbol. One of the manifestations of the symbol of that dark energy. Everybody is not everybody, but people are just going with it. Yeah. And, and now it's to the point that you walk down like I walk around my neighborhood in Los Angeles and God forbid I'm just getting something out of my car in our little driveway and somebody's walking by across the street and they see without a mask they like freak out like I might as well have like a bloody like a butcher hatchet covered like that I'm about to run after them yeah so we're conditioning people to have that separation and the dark force is the force that separates us. So like it's coming, whether or not, like whatever you want to say or not say about the virus, the fact is I see it as a mass ritual and I see this prophecy coming to light and it's the time of Horus and Horus is a warrior and Horus is a fighter and we're coming into the five year and I want to expand the five energy out of, if you're familiar with tantric numerology, you're going to be like, it's a teacher, it's the body. These are true, but it's the warrior and it's a teacher. It, it's, it's an activator and it's an intense energy and it's Horus energy. And so it's, it's, it's the balls in our court in a way. And I it's really, like, are I, we going to fight? I really feel that because, you know, when you look around again, like I I really believe in the big tent and that there, there are people in our community on all sides of, you know, the experience and thought around all of the issues that we're facing. And I think that's like a healthy community. Um, So I, I really, you know, uh, I feel everyone has to think for themselves and do for themselves. But when you see these types of numbers, like I was talking to someone today who is really exacerbated that, you know, I think upwards of 50% of, of people um, are polling that they don't think that the vaccine is safe and they don't want to take it. Um, and this person was just, was very exacerbated by that. Um, but I think, you know, these are good uh, in terms of personal sovereignty. I think these are good numbers because we're seeing people think for themselves, whether you're an anti-vaxxer or a pro-vaxxer or you like this vaccine or you don't, or you want to get it or you don't want to get it. I really like the the whole point. And I think you tell me, I feel like this five year is about another level of like thinking for yourself and standing up for your, for well, your own thought. Five is the disruptor that brings truth. Right. So it's like for some people, that truth is going to be a hard swallow. And that's the thing, this sort of dark energy, this Piscean age or the this these forces of set, as I was trained, um, don't want to give up control. And that's like a fundamental magical teaching. And that's why magic, excuse me, and Kundalini has always been underground is because there's too much darkness and it gets abused. Right. But now we it, and I'm going to step back to extra agree with what you're saying. It's just interesting how we've seen this year like no time in history, at least in our culture, that people yeah. have been separated from their spiritual growth. And I, we've seen so many setups and so many logical reasons to come in and say, "Well, screw my spiritual evolution." And, um, and for all the different reasons, and, and that's like the spiritual teaching and magic of the devil and the devil card in tarot is it's the force that ra- raises its ugly head within us that, that as we start to grow in advance, we demonize our growth. And we're always going to come up with some lower part of ourselves is always going to raise up and try to take you off that path. 
And people are falling for it left and right this year. And then you have governments coming in that's like, oh, you can't meet for your yoga classes, which for us is our spiritual community. You can't go to church, which for so many people, that's their spiritual connection. You can't go to your recovery meetings, like for AA, things like that. That's like people's spiritual path. You can't go to temple. You can't participate in the community of your spiritual evolution and your growth. But yet, so I've seen so many people choose to hop off their path out of some unresolved resentment based on whatever narrative your head wants to create. And that devil card will always create a smart narrative as to why you shouldn't evolve. And it's right. often, it's benign and it's logical. And that's, that's it. Yet now people are waking up. People are seeing the lies. People don't, turns out more people trusted the government, pharmaceutical companies and the news more than I ever thought. I was like probably in my own little uh, bubble of free thinkers my whole life. But now the people, people are waking up. And I really agree with your assessment. It's really like there's two timelines. Yeah. And there's a group of people that are petrified of, of all of this that want to they want to have, they have the courage to stay at home and destroy their lives. And there's like a whole other group of people that are like, whatever, I'm moving on and I'm done. And I don't believe anything. Even like Donald Trump, when he came into office or was running, he was like the fake news, the fake news. And you go turn on the news and they're like, this is a horrible narrative and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, day one magical training, you're taught the news is fake. Like where, like why, why are people believing this narrative? There's like been time and time again where a government of all governments didn't work in the favor and the best interest of its people. Well, also, you well, know, how is, how, like, how is that not common? Like every day, duh. I know it's odd, but you know, I, I think part of what we're up against right now is people have not studied history and the info dementia of the information age has caused so much kind of inability to process the information. Cause way before all of this, there was like all of these videos on YouTube of uh, Anderson Cooper and a bunch of CNN uh, cronies and other of these kind of MSNBC and uh, you know, Dr. I'm sure. Gita all the corporate news they're they're caught red handed doing something that basically makes the the shot um look a certain way there's a sensationalism but they're caught, you know there's there's all these kind of bloopers where they're caught um uh, making the news, making whatever news story they're covering look more extreme, more fearful, more sensationalized, blah, blah, blah. So even if you're, if you're, you know, you, you don't know if this, if th that's the case and you're kind of skeptical and this and that, just go on YouTube and look at these Anderson Cooper bloopers where he's basically caught like standing like in the middle of water when he's covering a storm just to make it look really, really bad. But it's like the only place that there's actually water. And like, you know, there's all sorts of like stuff like that. The, they're pretending the wind. I saw one where the like wind, there was like a newscast and they're like, oh my God, this hurricane. And they're pretending that they can't stand up. And then like two totally like sauntering kind of putz energy people are just walked by. Like we're having just a casual <laughs> stroll on our day off. Like and it wasn't even windy, although all that's probably censored because YouTube, uh, everything's being censored now. Yeah, that's the other mind blowing shock to me, and I just can't believe it. Like I cannot believe the level of censorship of alternative. It started with alternative medical information, which is exactly how I grew up like hippie vegetarian alternative medicine. I only the doctors I went to were like homeopathic doctors, naturopaths. And sure, I've, I go to real doctors from time to time. I've had to take sure. medication. I've had injuries. Like, it's like, uh, we have friends that are doctors, but like, I can't believe like even probably promoting a video of the benefits uh, to the immune system to vitamin D now, that's the kind of stuff getting taken down. 
And my old teacher years ago, or I'm from my age, this was like early 90s, was telling me stories of vitamin infusion, like vitamin B shot clinics getting raided by the FDA. And I was like, what? No way. And then I was like, oh my God, this is real. And now that stuff's happening left and right. And now just everything's silenced and the narrative is controlled. Well, I mean, I think that they have a problem on their hands, which I, I, I'm i curious where the these eclipses and this, this event on the solstice and this five-year come into play here because the information age is... Um, it's too overwhelming even for those who are trying to control it to control it, which I think we're also seeing the kind of like uh, just, and of course that's a psyop uh, on a psyop because it's, it's, it's misinformation, it's information. It's the, it's the play between misinformation and information, but certainly um, you're, you're just seeing kind of the overspill of they're trying to censor it, but they can't quite, you know, they don't quite have the capacity to, because they've created a monster. Ultimately the internet is artificial intelligence. Well, I know, and that's where I think the relief and that's where the reality comes in. And it's funny because we were talking earlier and uh, I was listening to, I was driving, I was listening to Spotify and every once in a while, their algorithm seems really spot on. And I'll give it credit. And that's always like the best, whatever, $13 a month I feel like I've spent for years. <laughs> but um, it said like, hit songs for you to explore that you'd never think about or listen to. And it was that John Lennon song, Instant Karma. And it came on and I was like, Instant Karma is going to get you. But then it's like, and we all shine on. And the five energy is a reckoning force. And so what's going to happen is the more all of this information gets suppressed, the more it's, it, like you said, it's working against it. It's like, I was used to follow, or I still follow, uh, what is this um kennedy jr and he's like he has a big platform talking about vaccines and yeah the robert and he gets into right robert kennedy jr and he gets into so much science so much information and i swear at the beginning of this uh scandemic i and i do think covid's real and i know people have gotten it but the way that it's being out of control and the control used as a mechanism of control over people to me yeah. sickens me but um i swear his instagram follower i think he had like what sixty thousand instagram followers like a decent account now he's he, pushing eight hundred thousand followers which means all in the time where everything's getting oppressed and I'm seeing accounts like that explode. And he doesn't come up on my feed. I have to type it in yep. because they still try to oppress it. They still try to censor it. And that's the thing. It's the Aquarian age. We're coming again into the five year, but this solstice, we have Jupiter, this, this beautiful expansion of wisdom and Saturn, just truth and reality to a certain degree. Cause I, I want to get into some magical teachings on Saturn it because it's truth and reality but it's very what we are seeing and experiencing in the 3d and we are born into a Saturn consciousness planet the people might you might find it interesting that the axis of the earth and the axis of Saturn are like parallel mm. and so in Kabbalah the earth planet earth is the closest frequency we have to saturn energy because we're incarnated on this planet to learn lessons the number five is the body we're incarnated into a body to learn lessons we're going to school here so are we going to get schooled are we going to do the schooling that's going to be the shift but it's interesting that these energies are going to be zero degrees aquarius for the first time and what is it six seven hundred or 12 something i don't know the math. it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years like well yes yeah, I, I think yeah i think zero degrees aquarius it's like 800 years um the conjunction like, and the, the conjunction on winter solstice is over twenty thousand years oh the fact that it's happening on that day i am doing a talk at rama for it so tune in because i want to get into some of the real esoteric teachings and the Kabbalah about it that an astrologer won't talk about um, on the 21st remington's doing a, a very esoteric teaching at rama festival yeah we're going deep it's real and it's in kabbalah terms it's uncharted territory yeah and but aquarian energy is that 
it's an awakening. It, it is the opening. And it's like we have the planet of, of truth. The Saturn's like, here's the reality. Okay. Like, here's the, like, we're going to assess that reality. I kept telling people this four year, the four is an opportunity to just stay neutral. Keep your heart open and say, what's the reality of my incarnation? What do I need? Well, okay, let's assess. It's just like doing the books. Like, okay, um, I want to start a business and I need X amount of dollars. And so here's the reality. I'm going to not take it personally. So the four energy is a great time to assess reality because shifting into that solstice shift and then shifting into the five year, the five says, well, you, I, you had a whole year to figure out who you are and what you want because the five energy goes for what it wants. Mm. And five is a powerhouse. It's a grab life by the freaking, you know what? And it's a killer energy, yeah. meaning yeah. it's in Kabbalah, the five is the sword. It's Gabora, which translates as severity and power. And it just is no time or no interest in any bullshit that doesn't serve the purpose of you. So it's very destructive, but the low frequency is destructive and rash impulsivity and violence. But the high frequency is let's clear the way. Let's take this sword. In magic, the sword is one of the most powerful symbols. It's used in the tarot. It represents one of the elements. And we just clear the way. And that, that magical weapon is this five energy. And it's a disruptor. It's an agitator. And so this energy of awakening and bringing it back to what you said, that we're going to see a level of people being like, no way. I don't believe you. I'm not going to listen to you. And we're already saw it in, happening more and more, but people are so separated yeah. in like what they believe and this narrative that they've really cultivated in the United States. <clears throat> well, you can't speak up for being oppressed of wearing a face mask because you weren't hereditarily oppressed through generations of this and blah, blah, blah. Right. So victim consciousness, they use that four energy to just pull it in and be like, well, you're not, you don't have enough problems in your life to have, to stand up to oppression yeah. and, and therefore you're entitled. And this whole time I've been like, screw that, screw that narrative. Don't listen to this. We all need to come together. The Eon of Horus is truth and liberation for all humanity at every level, whether it's just, you got some emotional triggers you want to sort out. But if you're living your life with the narrative of overcoming your trauma, the four year was the energy. I've literally said it publicly all the time. The four energy is a great opportunity to overcome past resentments, problems, traumas, and to forgive and to move on. And if and you don't, you become resentful <clears throat> and bitter. And that's like how the five kind of calcifies. That's the lower energy of the five. Exactly. So well put. This is why I love just talking to you. And I know you and I can like talk forever. Like whenever like, we, we meet up we socially, we're like, blah, blah. <laughs> but that's exactly it. Is if you don't clear those resentments now, resentments come back to haunt you. And it's a tool of the dark side. Yeah. resentment like anyone listening who has done like a little bit of even recovery out of off of like drugs and alcohol will you learn <clears throat> resentment's one of the biggest tools that keeps like addicts out there because yeah. sort of like well fuck the world and you know there's part of me that's like angry and pissed at the world but enough if that gets cultivated where it transcends anger and is a liberator five is the liberator Okay, so it's it's a weapon and it, it activates and it liberates, which is a good little rhyming catch, catchphrase, which would probably go in the book and then I've got to hand it in a few weeks. But it's an agitator too. It's, it's not any different than like, I use like this example and because five is Mars. So you know astrology well, and I know a lot of your listeners. Mars comes in and is right action. And when used well, it's an explosive energy. And it's not yeah. any different than like steel wool on like an old crusty casserole dish that you've been like soaking because you didn't want to get around to watching it. But it's that abrasive cleaner. It scrubs, but it's the same energy that exfoliates your skin. 
You yeah. know, I have like these yeah. exfoliating hand sponge hand uh, little sponges things, which is five. And I like rub them and I'm like, I'm, I'm applying five energy to have like brighter, clearer skin or like a palm brush. So anything in which we have the opportunity to clear away and clear away the, the BS, but we got to work out the resentments because the unevolved sort of calcified energy, as you put it, of five is going to be violent. It's going to be rash. It's going to be impulsive and it's going to be out of control. Yeah. And so I don't want to make predictions of war. Five is the number of war. How is it going to go? It's up to us. Yeah. Well, I think that um, part of it's like such a slippery slope because I do feel like part of what has to happen is people have to wake up and stand up for themselves and for their lives and their freedoms and their and their communities and their children's education. You know, I mean, that's part of the wake up, the wake up that's happening. Um, and you know, and what that looks like in the like positive side of Mars, because the positive side of Mars is like, I'm not going to take your fucking shit anymore. You know, step the fuck back. Exactly. Um, it, it totally sets boundaries. And that yes. doesn't, but I'd like to encourage people, like, don't think asserting yourself has to be aggressive. And, and I see, I mostly deal with people that are more troubled to assert themselves to speak up for what they want. Mars is desire. Go for what you want. Yeah. You yeah. should have, you had a year. Most people had a year, some level of rest and respite. And um, this was a great time to, okay, who am I? What do I want? So let's go for it. And five Mars energy is a little fire under your butt. That's like, let's go. It's the emperor card in the tarot. Mm. And the emperor is ruled by Aries. Now, some of you that know tarot that are listening, you're like, no, that's the hierophant card because it says number five on it. It's never that obvious. The, the fifth card of the tarot is the emperor and it's the Hebrew letter He, which is a window. And so the, you got to go into the deeper layers. Yes, the five does apply to the hierophant card. And there's truth in that. But that's like surface level. And I still apply those teachings sometimes. But um, we have this more encoded layer of s symbolism that this five energy is a window. We've just had these eclipses. It's been an eclipse, year of eclipses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, and now we have a window opening. So we have all these portals, we have a window opening, we have this zero degree aspect, Jupiter, Saturn coming together, Aquarius, which is just like the water bear, it's the truth. It's just like, here it is, I got a better new way and don't take it personally and it, you catch up, like shape up or ship out. Like right. I can't emphasize enough, my entire many formal 22 years of magical training, had to do with the idea that we're, you, I was incarnated in a shift and a consciousness, pivotal consciousness shift of the planet for a new spiritual paradigm. And there's no more fence sitting. There's hmm. no more lollygagging and there's no more not living it and not doing it. And we can't. And so we're, we're done. Like it, it literally is shape up or ship out energy. And there are many traditions talk about if you don't step up to the frequency, you're going to implode in some way, whether you go mad, whether you die, because you the vibrational shifts, you won't be able to handle the evolution. I'm not being all doom and gloom. I'm trying to be inspirationally like, let's get it together. This five energy is not one to fuck off. Well, and also I think it's important to understand that you, you know, standing up for yourself doesn't have to be aggressive. Like that's the part where I feel like, especially in this, in the spiritual realm, but just in the way we're conditioned and cultured is like, we, we, you know, we have to be nice and we have to, people have to like us. And there's all this kind of neurotic, insecure, um, but you know, social media has just exemplified it. And the, and the other, the polarity of that insecurity is cancel culture. Um, I'm, I'm too uh, insecure to basically have anybody around who doesn't agree with me or says, you know, anything I, you know, dislike or whatever, that's just insecurity. Um, 
And so I, I think that like part of the exalted five is like, how am I, you know, how do I stand up for righteousness without it being aggressive? It's like, it's just, it's just like truth, truth um, uh, slaying, you know? It's, it's the total truth slayer. I always think too, because with numerology free format, where do five show up? right? You have five fingers. The, it's the body because you look at the arms, the legs, and the head. You can make a pentagram out of that. Um, but it's also the fifth chakra. It's the throat chakra. Like that is speaking. Now, you know, in yoga, we're taught like speak from our core, but the voice and the vocal cords are here that are making that sound. It's a communicator. And uh, what I have to say, my personal experience is it just some of it just took time because I was a little, when I was younger, I was a lot more sort of passive and I'd let things slide to the point that I would just get resentful and I would not, I would just try to avoid things sometimes like a job or whatever, or a conflict. Um, and when you, and it, I've learned over time and I know you said it, but it's like learning oh, I can address and stand up for my desire and what I want. I don't have to make a big deal about it. And if I, fifth chakra, if I communicate that and just speak up, my life is going to go a lot easier. And if I, I always say five is yes or no is the new yes. And five is a wonderful energy to say no. And I think there's been a negative narrative even around that. I went into the shop. It's kind of like feminist witchcraft themed <laughs> which I usually get along with all those people. They had the switchblade and it said boundaries. And I was like, that's clever. But I was like, why are you always ingraining this narrative that setting, and this has been a year I've seen so much social media, setting boundaries and setting boundaries. I have to have boundaries, like all true, but you're already coming from the narrative that you've been pushed and cornered to a point that you have to react and be resentful and be like a jerk about it. And if you go ahead of time and figure out, and a lot of it's just knowing what you want, and it, which also means knowing what you don't want. Yep. Like I know so much what I don't want to do. And so I'm just like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I just don't want to do it. I just, I hate getting high. I have way too much Aquarius in my chart to like be pinned down. Right. And so I'm like, you're holding me hostage. I'm not going to meet you at five. So that's like the funny extreme, but it's oh. just taking me time and training and it just takes practice. Speak up for yourself in little ways. It's not a big deal. You can do it very nice and it's way easier. You're always just clearing the air. The five energy clears the air. Well, hey, I think sorry, we got off on the wrong foot. That was stupid of me to say that or whatever. You hurt my feeling and then we move on. I mean, wouldn't that be nice? I, I you know, I think um, this is where we we have to cultivate a new level of of. It's like a mixture of like a certain type of dignity uh, with our communication and integrity, and then also compassion because everybody, you know, everybody says the wrong thing. Everybody, everybody, you know, offends each other occasionally, or I don't know, all this kind of stuff that's just become like such a huge drama. Um, and I think on top of it, then like, there's also this other side of it, which is like, um, I haven't told you this, Remington, you just laugh that, that like people feel like they now can like come onto your social media platforms and shit on you and shit on the things that you're like, this is part of like what's happened on in the four. And then like, uh -oh. then they get mad that you block them um, <laughs> or you delete their oh, comments. Uh -huh. I mean, was, since when has free speech meant that like you can just like go to somebody's house and 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 shit on their uh, uh, doorstep and that that's like you're supposed to just take it? We have no free speech, but we have free shitting on everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, it's funny with Instagram because I actually got it a little bit, not to the extent that I know you do, but um, because like I didn't post enough of other people's political agendas. And um, I was like, literally, I was just like, fuck off. Like, this is, this is just, in, by the way, for, for numerology, astrology, mysticism, magical teachings, Kabbalah, you want to learn about that, come to me. Like, you want to be a social justice warrior? Like, there's a million Instagrams, probably, probably more. Like, knock yourself out. But, like, the, the, the retort that I get is, you have a platform. Like once you hit 10,000 followers, I guess, 
you have a platform. And my Instagram has been gridlocked since quarantine at 13,000 followers. Um, with it'll, it'll be like you gained 180 followers and 179 people unlocked you like every day. And I'm like, no way is like these people, are like, I'm unfollowing, I'm unfollowing. I'm like, yeah, I'm too easy to even deal with that kind of stuff but like and maybe that's just me but like yeah people want to that's just another low consciousness where people are barking orders at what everyone else should be doing which i'm curious to see how the five year and these fools that think they hold the truth yeah. you know like and yet we have access to all these spiritual teachings that nobody had access to before right and I think that there's an entitlement that can come in. And this is one of the prophecies too, is this entitlement of the Aquarian age and this information age. And one astrologer we know, I, I took it uh, to me, I think on a deeper level where the Aquarian, the Leo, it, it, Leo Aquarian dynamics, is this sort of diva sycophant. And it's more about, to me, it's like being, where are you being an entitled diva in your life that you think spiritual teaching should be handed to you and everything should be given to you on a spiritual on a silver platter right right and and that's like the misnomer like you still have to you still have to pay dues you have to put in the energy it's your incarnation yeah stop trying to have other fucking people try to do it for you like that that mentality whether it's like well the government to do all this it's like give me the the choices to have the most spiritual freedom in my life because i'm incarnated and my spiritual evolution is in my hands right like i could like meet with these high teachers and i might get energetic little things but i still have to do it yeah and the five energy is doing it and we're gonna see entitled aquarian um like there's a low life energy to the Aquarian age and this entitlement drives me crazy or I'll get messages like you have, you have a free YouTube videos. I don't want to do anything until I'm like, uh, I'm sure if you can search some stuff, but I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm like, you can hop on my Patreon. It's like a measly 70 cents a day. I'm giving you a lot of secret teachings, sign up for Rama TV. Like, like it's not right. even like you always, the magical teachings you always have to pay. Like yeah. why we want all this free stuff for our soul, but you're willing to pay a fortune in whatever other forms of entertainment going out drinking, but you won't pay anything from your soul. And that this entitlement, this is going to be a wake up call because we're going to see people implode and not handle. And when the truth is revealed, their psyches aren't going to shift. And I'm waiting for either some big alien reveal, which They've already revealed themselves, but on a like, you know, Joe Blow, Jane Blow, or whatever the saying is, regular quote unquote persons, like, oh yeah, totally, like aliens, this and that. It's right. like, it's been, it's like they're prepping that in the government, even CNN is talking about UFOs, like CNN, the most like lame ass medical advice bought off from pharmaceutical companies for entertainment news. Like people also have to realize news is a for-profit entertainment industry, not any different than Netflix. Or the Kardashians are keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> totally. I would actually, now I will watch that over like any news bullshit. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, it's basically <laughs> the same thing. All, all, you know, all of the, all of that. I mean, and I think that it's exciting to see how many people realize that are are waking up to that. I mean, that is like as much as we may have been surprised how many people didn't didn't know before. I mean, if they didn't know before, some of the positive aspects of this year have been just that like, oh, wait a second, um, something's not right here. And when you're just using like logic, a little bit of intuition, a little bit of, of just looking around and being alert, it doesn't take much to put it together that something's, well, something's not adding up. Either there really is two timelines because I was like, especially during quarantine, I, I like will go, even when I was like tracking the news, I go on like regular, like quote like liberal news shit like msnbc and cnn which i've been in that algorithm essentially my entire life yeah. and i'm like well let me just see these people that people hate right like steve bannon all these nazi conservatives let mm -hmm. me see what they have to say 
and I'm a huge fan of like Glenn Greenwald. And if you're not familiar with him, check him out because he's just a voice of reason. And he's like yeah. a gay, vegan, animal rescue shelter person who lives in Brazil with his husband and they're like adopted children. Who and had to step just, who had to step down from his own company this year because they tried to fucking censor him. His own news organization that he started literally censored him. And he's not, he just is like, here's the truth. Here are good things about Trump. Here's some really stupid, awful things. Here are good things about Joe Biden. Here's really awful things. But beyond the realm of politics, but he's really going after censorship. Yeah. But like, I like I got out of that. And there's like, there's a reason over half this country is like, even with this election is like, this isn't real. And I think like, I, I think just common sense where you're like, wow, there are like insane level of support for like Trump. I mean, I thought the whole thing even back in the day with like Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, I'm like, Hillary, uh, Bernie Sanders is packing stadiums. Right. People, and I know that I'm not just in a little LA Bernie Sanders bubble. It's like, it's freaking mental. Yeah. How into like people were into him. And then I saw that same thing happen with Trump. And then I was like, I never even met a Hillary Clinton supporter in my life. Like one person, because they were very like logical about it. And, um, and I'm like, how did that all, how did she win that? And then I was like, how, like, it just doesn't make logical sense. Yeah. And, and so I just like go, I try, I, I broke the algorithm. Um, but it's interesting to me that there's half the country's like, absolutely not. I watch CNN, this way it is. And then all these other people are like, this is total fraud and it's bullshit. And it's, it's look at both. I'm always looking at both sides and we're in this Gemini sad eclipse energy. Gemini in its best quality is going to look at all the sides because it just wants the truth. Yeah. And I don't know that I have all of those answers and I, politics isn't like my my shtick, but in magic, truth is, that's our shtick, truth and yeah. liberation, yeah. and that there really is one truth, and, like, it's, I read this tweet, too, it was some political person, I'm not even sure how I came across it, but it was, like, it was, like, a little mock-up of a conversation, and they were, like, yeah, I can't believe it, I was talking to those people, and it's as if they just entered through a different portal and a different dimension about how afraid they are of, like, traveling and viruses and COVID and they're sheltering in place and they're doing all this. Meanwhile, there's all these other people that are like, yeah, whatever. Gina was just in Florida. Well, they're not afraid of it. Why is Florida? Like, why are they like, ah, whatever. I'm going to take matters into my, my life in my own hand. That's the magical teaching. We take our incarnation in our hands and we want any system of government is going to allow us the freedom to live the lives that we want to live and i don't well, need you know the government telling me that you have to take a medical procedure right like i don't care if they were like drink this mineral water it'll give you five million dollars if you drink it and you'll like live to whatever you'll immediately lose 40 pounds i'd be like fuck off you can't make me do this well, I think what's going to be interesting is like, I think I said this to you the other day, I think they're going to use corporations to mandate certain things like um, the air, uh, you know, like airlines and the government's just really bailed out the airlines. So I think that's kind of like a backdoor to the airlines being the reason if you want to travel, um, you're going to have to, you know, do certain, certain things, or if you want to go to concerts or whatever. So it's going to be very fascinating. Whoa. And at the same time, what, go ahead. Yeah. I just got huge chills because that's the magical prophecy that started with in order to serve you better. Right. So yeah. the government can back off, but it's like these idiots that are like, well, Twitter and YouTube, those are private corporations. It's their community guidelines. I'm like, um, yeah, but they, at this point, they're utility companies. Then that's how they should be treated. Not any different than the phone company. Like, and I, I talk to people who grew up in communist countries and then go fuck off because they will tell you how, like I have a friend who grew up in Poland and then left and then, you know, the ball came down and all that. She said when she'd get a phone call, like her aunt would call her, they would have a, a monitor. Someone would say like, hi, this is 
Stephanie with the government listening in on your phone call. And so that's like in order to serve them better for the communist state or whatever the case is. And you're totally right. And those are the prophecies. And guess what the magical teaching of the Aquarian age is? It's the age of the corporation, right? right? The Piscean age, we saw great statues to, to first, it started off with spiritual figures all over, like here's saints and Jesus and Buddha and statues, right? Of like spiritual teachers. Eventually it just turned into statues of kings and lords and polit- now just politicians and some rich schmuck bought this chunk of land and now they run, right. you know, they, right. they started their city. Um, so I still find it interesting that all of those statues are starting to come down in an Aquarian age point of view. Some of it I don't agree with in the methods, but that was the teaching. And now most of that is replaced with what? There's advertisements everywhere. Yeah. There's advertisements in the back of your grocery receipt. Like every square inch of our existence some smart marketer is like, well, we could put an ad there. Yeah. Like now they'll come up, I'll pause like Hulu and it's an ad for like beer or whatever. Like in the pause button now with the, with the QR little code that I can scan on my phone to be like, ooh, let me try this product. Um, and I'm like, on some level it's clever, but that's exactly what you said is that now the prophecy means more to me. The way you put it is like these corporations, we've given too much control for them to have control over our lives. So it's like, well, free speech still exists. It's just they're a private company and they have the right to dictate their fact checkers and community standards. Right. How is that any different than saying like, well, this person of color or a gay person or a Jewish person can't come into my business. Like that, and I'm waiting and I'm waiting for my magical teachings or I'm waiting for a yogic teaching to get fact checked. Right, And that's the next thing. And you're right. The, the airlines will be like, well, it finds a choice. Right. It's a privilege. And if you right. want to do this. Right. That's exactly how it's going to happen. And so then it's about lifestyle and lifestyle choices. But then, I mean, again, I don't know, but I have this feeling like, wouldn't it be interesting if that, that then opens a space for uh, a niche market of new airlines that are pro health freedom? I am praying all of that stuff happens. And so I mean, but you think guys, about that any pilots out there. You know, my cousin is a is a commercial pilot, like, you know, Air Force guy and then a commercial pilot for years. Um, I'm like, but people in the military are already getting forced to take a lot of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, I think that, and there's already alternatives opening up for free speech social media, but they're just labeled as like neo-Nazi hate. Everything that doesn't go with the narrative now, or if you want freedom from lockdowns, you're like a neo-Nazi. That's yeah. like the, you're, and then if you don't believe in the certain science and mask wearing, like wearing a fucking bandana, you're labeled there. I found about 20 articles of basically regurgitating the exact same thing, how you're a sociopath. Yep. And uh, I'm like, wow, that's just such a strong narrative, as opposed to being a sociopath of like oppressing the planet, keeping children away from their friends, keeping dying people away from their loved ones, not being able to get married. Like, what the f- actual F? Like, well, every and, day, and something all- more stupid. And, and and all I'm the like, suicides. Whatever. I mean, all the suicides just in this week, I've heard of so many suicides, so many relapses. I've had so many people reach out to me who are in massive mental health crises. I mean, this is just the beginning. And I think this is going to be like this. This is going to be the theme of 2021 of, uh, I mean, just besides the like, shattering uh, economic issues and um, food shortages and water issues and all the stuff that I think is part of what the reckoning of the five, this is my opinion, um, not as like a fear mongering, but as just like a reality, like a, a reckoning of like adulthood on planet earth, um, spiritual adulthood 
But I also feel like the mental health crisis is just, it's so deep and so profound right now. Um, just, I, I see it, it, it talking to people coming up to the holidays where, who are alone, who are away from their family. The holidays are hard already. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, these are real, this is real. This is a real epidemic happening. And the, yeah, it, the mental virus is the mega virus and the conditioning is horrible and now like i'll see people I, i'm like do do we hug what's going on what is because i'm more like what is their viewpoint on this are they a full-blown like masky like fall into the narrative or are they just like fuck this i'm pro health and i'm pro working on things that make my body vital and i actually think the five is great for health not only is it the physical body but you think about the natural immune functioning fighting capacity of the human body is mind blown, yeah. right? And if you look more into and explore natural health, which is going to promote things like host theory as opposed to germ theory, it's just all like natural medicine basically says we our bodies naturally work. And like sometimes here's herbs, here's things that may enhance and help that function. But if we keep like our Vedic sort of root principle is it starts with digestion. Yeah. And this is coming, Gina's sister is an Ayurvedic counselor. She's trained. And she was breaking it down. She's like, it starts like in that, in her training, she's like, it starts with digestion. And, and once that's optimal, like your body's naturally working. And there's so many uh, studies and I've gone to talks too, even about gut health that they are determined, uh, some scientists have determined that even our gut health wasn't about digestion for ancient man, especially it was more about immunity and well-being. Mm. And so let's the five energy can really activate something within our bodies that our bodies will naturally fight and be empowered. But we're disempowering ourselves because so many people who don't prescribe to standard American health and standard American diet and the food pyramid are getting oppressed and censored. And we're being forced to stay in, not get sunshine, you know, not breathe oxygen and to work on our bodies that will naturally fight things off. And um, the five energy can fight off. I'm not saying any medical diagnosis, but the five is, a, again, it's a fighting energy. Yeah. And we need to empower our bodies. Yeah. And I talked, I did a Rama talk on 444 about these very old Rosicrucian prophecies and warnings that on 444 and that number 444, and we had all this talk, it was April 4th, and then what was it, Pluto and mm -hmm. Pluto and Saturn? No, Pluto, Pluto and Saturn. Saturn. Or yeah. Pluto and Saturn, we're like, here we are. Um, and all of the 444 energy was a warning that said, you need to be of sound mind and physical endurance, and you have to work on your glandular system because the occult energies that are coming through are going to be so powerful that you will be crushed. Yeah. And what system works on your glandular system? Probably the best. It's freaking Kundalini yoga. It is. It is. And these are Rosicrucians. Rosicrucians were doing Kundalini yoga. They're Absolutely. Doing yoga. It's the yoga, the wet, you know, the Western mystery tradition uh, is called within inner circles. It's the yoga of the West. Yeah. And we learn yoga. And I think you'll find this very interesting. There's a, there's a teaching in, in sort of that, my, my grooming, not from the ashram that I grew up on, that one of the yogic teachings is you never put yourself in a situation you don't want to be in that mm -hmm. isn't in alignment with your will, meaning your true spiritual purpose. And that's just what we were talking about. Can you assert mm -hmm. yourself? Can you set a boundary? Can you speak up for yourself? Learn how to do say no to things you just don't want to do, even if it's a little thing, like ah, I don't want to go out tonight or whatever. Yeah. Quarantine's been great. <laughs> I know, like, seriously. But I think we're so conditioned. I don't want to blow your cover, but we did see each other the other night, and we like. Oh, I talked about left, it. <laughs> I left your house, and we were like leaving. Like, okay, you go out. We'll wait. We'll yeah. hang out. Then we'll leave, so the neighbors yeah. aren't like, oh my god there's like a few people over there like yeah having talking hanging out like friends <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm like conditioned 
already. I'm like, oh shit, we're gonna get caught. Like, what the hell? I feel like I'm like back in like old, I'm 20 something, you know, tinkering around late night indulgences. <laughs> Yeah, no <laughs> indulgences that weren't legal. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I think it's um, it it just yeah, you can really see how quickly things start to. It, it, I, I think the best way for me to put it is that beware of the the psychological operations inside the psychological operations because it's it's complex this information age it's it it's like a huge psychological operation and then inside of it everything that is kind of right side up should be upside down and upside down should be right side up and I mean it's a very um you know talk about magical teaching I mean it really is like everything we know in spirituality which is that um, the way we've been taught to live and think is not uh, is not normal. It's not natural. It's it's abnormal and unnatural. Yeah, the the brainwashing psyop agenda is at a level that I was always warned about, and I'm like, ah, eh, you know, like that seems a little crazy town. Even coming from very high teachers that I got to really spend many years of my life with. And um, now I'm like, I, I didn't disagree, but there's just a part of me that's like, okay, you know, it's a little deep, but like now I'm seeing it, we're seeing it. We're all seeing it. And the thing is the deeper numerology that I've exposed to some of it is a way to track these malicious benevolent energies. And I, I don't think there's a lot of people on the planet that, that can or that just not, they just don't know. How. I've had the training. I've dedicated yeah. my whole life to this. Yeah. yeah. And the numerology starting from even like um, a lot of those, like, I'm going to say riots because I personally experienced riots here. I didn't experience protests. Some places were peacefully protesting, but um, the energies that were uh, put around those numbers like 846, which I've talked about before and all the twin cities, but Kobe Bryant's death was a big one. And that numerology tied into all these eights, which ties into COVID, which ties into 5G. So I'm like seeing this and every time. I'm like, what? Like Harjeevan's spoken some about it. I just, I send it to Harjeevan um, and then a, a small group of people and even like just the numbers that keep revealing themselves, there is some diabolical shit at work. Sorry to swear a bunch, but people need to wake the F up. That's five. We're not fucking around anymore, people. Well, you know, you called that Kobe Bryant thing. And then I, I started, did I send you all that stuff from um, the bishop who... Uh, I don't no, I was you know, hard, I was hard, vortexing with RG to like three in the morning for a bunch of like I'd send an email and it's like super late and then he'd respond. I'm like, I was up, okay. <laughs> Well, you totally, you called the connection to the Kobe Bryant thing, but there's this incredible kind of thought, thought leader, or, I think named Bishop Larry something. And he was, oh, can, can you hear me? No, I can't. Okay. He was uh, this guy, Bishop, the Bishop, I'll call him. I have to look up his name. He was connecting some of the stuff that you had put together uh, in early, right when it happened. Um, just the, the connection between all of what, since Kobe Bryant's um, death slash, slash murder, depending on how you look at it, um, and beyond what all this kind of, yeah, all these signs and symbols. And when you start to look in the matrix this way and the way that Remington teaches and um, he's decoding for us, it gives you a superhuman power. I mean, let's just be honest. Well, and when I looked into some of those numbers too, uh, not exaggerating here, demonic entities started coming after me. Yeah. And I was sharing them with Gurjas, and she's like, are you sure you want to share some of this? And I was like, I normally I wouldn't, but I feel like I need to. And I could tell I got attacked. And then she left this ominous message. She was like, that's your destiny. And I was like, uh, great. Yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. 
I did speak. I just knew I had to, and it had to do with the 846 and the Twin Towers and all of the Gemini season, which we touched. I touched on a little bit, but there's some deeper stuff. I'm going to reveal a little bit more on the um, on the solstice. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I know we've been at it for a while and we could talk forever, but I'm really looking forward to um, your talk on the solstice at Rama Festival. And um, thank you for just, you know, kind of being um, true and courageous in times like these and um, keeping up and doing your magnificent dharma and just thank you. I love you very much and just so, so uh, happy to be on the planet with you right now. Um. I I love you so much. I can't even say, and I'm so glad that we yet again in this incarnation not only met paths, but like I get to teach with you and, and share that. And I'm going to drop some reveals and people like don't get offended and don't be attached to your one narrative. I'm not really into the politics, but man, some of these numbers are just dark. And yeah. Dark. Yeah. And, um, and there's also awakening and it, yeah. it's time and the solstice is going to be a mega, a mega leap. And so from now until then, people just get, get your game straight and get it on for real. For real. This is the time. And uh, I feel like uh, there's a major opportunity. So thanks for doing, thanks for pre-gaming with me here. Um, and I'm, I can't wait. This is live now, but I can't wait to get this. We'll oh, get this yeah. up. <clears throat> If you get in a numerology report too, just to put a little plug, uh, Gene and I really put a lot of time and energy into these. We're doing a, we're, we keep shipping all the way. We, I was selling them into August this year, but just to get a pretty good shot that you'll have it for a Christmas gift, like we're doing a big shipment tomorrow. So if you get it in now, otherwise you'll probably still get it, but just, we're just giving some uh, leeway for it. And you'll these, find me on Instagram. These take a lot of love and energy and you can feel it. Like it's like, it's like a, it's a major power. I feel like it's like such a dossier of power. Um, so thank People you. People message me and open them and they cry. Yeah. It's really, so, it's, it's, it's deep wisdom. And um, so we'll make sure I, I, we'll drop all of the information, make sure people know I'm also going to post on my social and reality riffing social. And um, I love you. See you at the festival. See you I in a couple you. days. All right. See you soon. Legally. So, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bye. Love. Love you. Love you. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Reality Riffing. These are conversations that I think are important with people who are doing great things in the world about subject matters that need to be discussed. If you enjoyed the content, the conversation, please feel free to share with your people, share with your friends and family, rate the podcast below and also subscribe.